Hey, welcome back to JB Breaks Free. I hope you're having a great day, a blessed day, and getting 1% better than yesterday. And breaking free from anything that's holding you back from having the best day ever, from becoming the best version of yourself, and from doing what you want to do within reason. And I've set up that life. I'm on the last day of my week vacation. It wasn't my choice. The restaurant closed down for a break before the holidays, I guess, and for some maintenance. That's fine. We've got plenty of time coming up off too. So that's fine. I have set up a life that I don't need to escape from, that I don't need to take a break from. So that is a good thing. Got a couple of things, uh, a few things I want to talk about today. A uh, couple crazy Instacart stories that happened to me this morning. I'm like, oh, really? Um, I flipped a basketball card for $35,000. And seven things to tell yourself when you're feeling anxious, and then a few things to help us cope. Um, breaking free from anxiety is, is one of my main things. You know, we can have physical fitness, but we also have to have mental fitness too on our break free journeys. But uh, before I get into that stuff, just a couple quick things that I've been watching. I watched The Parent Trap, the 1998 version with Lindsay Lohan, when there's two versions of her. And they're twins, and that was kind of fun to watch with my twins, and it was a heartwarming story for sure. I'm curious about the original now that I think was in the 60s, but it was fun watching the girls, and when the girls switched spots, and one of them met their mom for the first time, and one of them met their dad for the first time, and one of my girls, I think, was tearing up a little bit when she saw her mom for the first time, and it was a nice movie. They, that movie left me with a lot of questions. Um, but I don't think that's central to a Disney plot. So watch The Parent Trap. And then for an adult show, we, my wife and I were watching All the Light That We Cannot See. It's a limited series on Netflix, and it takes place during World War II. I think how the Germans have occupied Paris, and Americans are bombing them, and they won't let anyone leave. And this, there's a blind girl, and... She's like sending out signals over the radio, which of course has been outlawed, and it's really good, really good acting, really good writing, really good um, scenes. It just makes me shake my head. What a crazy world uh, that it can be. But speaking of crazy world, crazy Instacart stories. The first one was I did this quick order for four items. It was two pork tenderloins and two things of Italian bread. Okay, cool. Start off my day, like 12 bucks. And as I get into my car and I sit down to hit navigate to show me exactly where I have to go, there's this huge paragraph that pops up and I'll put it on the screen here, telling me, screaming at me with um, exclamation points, give me the receipt, give me the receipt, make a copy of the receipt. Now we're supposed to keep the receipts as an Instacart shopper and we are supposed to click a button that confirms we've got the receipt and can grocery stores make copies of receipts? I've never seen or heard of that being done. So I'm thinking, great, this is just what I need. I'm gonna get yelled at, I'm gonna get a one star order, whatever, I drop the stuff off. No receipt for that woman or that person. Um, so I got out of there alive, I didn't see anyone, but I'm sure they'll, uh, they're mad at me. So on my next order, it's a two part order, 22 bucks, okay. And I drop off the first one real quick and then the second one pops up and, and I will show it to you right here. It's telling me to go to Weedsport, which is a town over. And then it's telling me to go to an apartment building in Auburn, where I live. And I, I don't really want to go two different places. So I go where... I didn't want to leave town, first of all, and come back. So I go to the place where it's in town, and I take a screenshot of the directions, as you can see. And I drop it off, and as I get to the door of this apartment building, I see this. And it's this these signs saying, you know, alarms are going to be triggered, uh, police will be notified, there's a ring camera on the door, and I always feel like I'm being watched on the ring cameras when I'm dropping off uh, the groceries. I'm like, oh, geez. So I set the stuff down, I go to the car, and I can't mark the order complete. And so now I'm starting to contact Instacart and saying, hey, this is where they told me to go. Uh, can you please mark this order complete? And then I get a message from the customer, no, you have to go to Weedsport, uh, 10 minutes away, eight miles. And I'm like, no, I have a screenshot of directions telling me to go where I am. And I go, I've already dropped the groceries and I've already wasted my time and wasted my gas. You know, I'm not sure what to do. 
and they go and the person goes well if you could please just grab them I'll give you an extra tip okay sure so I grab them and I drop them off and I did get up did end up getting a little bit of extra money but it's just like come on you know just crazy things that can happen with Instacart on a happier note I flipped a sports card this Victor Wembenyama card uh, I bought it for three thousand um, dollars. I'll say two weeks ago. I think it was like the first or second night of the NBA, and that came out of my second checking, where I put all the profits into from my flipping of items. You know, could be it's, it adds up. As you guys know, it was over a thousand dollars a month of me reselling stuff last month. It was like two forty, um, but that stuff has added up over time. And as I talked about in my last video, I referenced kind of like FU money. Like that's money that I have sitting there at my disposal where it takes a lot of pressure off a lot of things. And boy, it's like pulling teeth for me to um, get that account to shrink. You know, I'm, I'm trying to save. I'm trying to be frugal. I did see an opportunity with this sports card. I just happened to watch the game. I happened to check eBay. And I saw a little bit of value there. And I go, okay, I'm pulling the trigger on this thing. And I was, you know, I was nervous. I was scared. And the guy accepted it, and I mean, it was at my house within two days. I'm like, oh, geez, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm invested into this sport card. I talked to my wife, she was fine with it. I don't really buy stuff. Um, she's trusted me with investments. I've made some money off sports cards before, and I think I'll make some money off sports cards in the future for some that I already have. And a couple have gone down, of course, but when it hits, it hits. And, but nothing like this. And so I get it, and now one sells for 8,000. And I put mine, I list mine for like pretty high. So I have mine listed at like, I don't know, 15,000 or something. And then there's an auction and it goes and sells for 11,000. So now I'm thinking, all right, I made $8,000. So I put it to 24,000, 25,000. And I'm just trying to, you know, set, move the bar, thinking that someone will buy that before then. Then this guy messaged me on eBay and he has his for like 100,000. And then I see on another completely different site called Golden Auctions, Golden Marketplace, there's another one listed for $100,000. I'm like, okay, whatever. I'll move mine up again to 35000 I should have did forty five or fifty. And I, again, I'm thinking, I'm just moving the bar. It'll sell, you know. I mean, the last one to sell was for eleven. I think the next one will sell for fifteen, for $20,000. You know, I'm laying on the couch watching all the light that we cannot let go. I hear the little cha-ching thing on eBay that pops up. Your item sold full price. No one even gave me a low ball offer. Oh my God. So I start kind of freaking out, but at the same time, I'm like, oh, I should have had it for more. But what a cool thing um, to have happened. And it happened within two weeks. I was ready to wait two, three years for something like that to happen. Um, but that's huge. That's a reseller mindset. And you know, I've been preaching on this channel. Look for things to resell. Look for things in your niche that you might be an expert at or that you can become an expert at. And that is going to help me tremendously. I mean, it's just going to stay into the account. You know, it'll help us and it can help other people. And I'd also like to make another investment if I could. So we'll see what happens. But it's pretty ecstatic. It almost doesn't seem real. Something like that just happened. But that's going to really boost up the side hustle income report for November 2023. But even with that, I still have the same thought processes. I still have the same issues. Not much has really changed in my life. Um, there are still certain anxieties that can creep in. I go back to work tomorrow. You know, certain situations that you can be anxious in. You can be anxious for no reason, which tends to happen a lot. I think it's just the way like our brains can be wired. And I had a long talk with my girls this morning over breakfast because we were watching Star Wars and Yoda said failure is a teacher's um, greatest lesson. And I was telling them how we learn from our failures. And then I'm telling them that even if we make a mistake, you know, we can learn from it. I'm telling them that not again not to let other people there's some girl drama in fifth grade and not to let others impact their mood you cannot control others um 
you know, one of them's being ignored, the other one's saying she's not a good friend, doesn't want to be your partner at soccer, and, and I, I, that stuff really hasn't come up too much, and I hate to see him cry about that, you know, and so I told him, don't let others affect you, and I'm like, don't let things that have not happened yet bother you, and not to suffer imagined troubles, is why if you, if you want to have the best day ever, then you can't suffer imagined troubles. I, I don't feel like that is a combination. So to break free of that anxiety, here's seven things that we can say to ourselves. Uh, the first is going to be, thank you for the warning, but I'll be okay. Our brain's sending that signal that this situation might suck. Uh, what are you going to say in this situation? What are you going to do in this situation? You're going to get in trouble. You're not going to be able to accomplish it. No, thank you for the warning, but I'll be okay. And, you know, write these down and, and, and look them over, you know. Number two, whatever happens, I can handle it and I will be okay. No matter what happens at work tomorrow, I'll be fine. No matter what situations I encounter, what you encounter, you will be okay. Uh, number three, this feeling will not last forever. Tell yourself, this, this too shall pass. This feeling will not last forever. And there's no reason to to think that it will, there's no reason to suffer. It's not right here, it's not right now. Oh, that's another thing that I was talking about, Luke Skywalker and Yoda always says, you're looking out to the future, you're not looking right here and right now, and you can't be looking in the past either at what might have happened. Stay right here, stay right now. Number four, my brain is giving me wrong signals. I am safe. Right here, right now, I am safe. Whatever happened in the past is gone. Whatever's gonna happen tomorrow, the next day, the next month, how are we going to get through it? How are we going to get through the next two months into 2024? My brain is giving me the wrong signals. I am safe right now. It won't last forever. Whatever happens, I can handle it. Thank you for the warning. I'll be okay. Number five, I have felt this way before and nothing bad happened. I think Mark Twain said 90% of the troubles <clears throat> that I've encountered have never happened, have never come true. You know, it's just... How many times have I worried about this or that? <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe I can edit that out. But you know what? Nothing's perfect, so I'll let it ride. Um, I've happened. I felt this way before, and nothing bad has happened. True. Number six, I know it hurts, but I will be okay. Anxiety can suck in the moment. It's okay to embrace that. Um, but you will be okay. I will be okay. And number seven, I know how to cope. And I trust myself. And that's part of the break free process. It's not just writing these seven things down and they are good reminders. But are we going to sit there with those things? Or can we be proactive? Can we take action to, to break free on our own? To use coping mechanisms. And there's a bunch of them. What can they be? Uh, the first can be to be physically active to exercise, to work out, to go for a walk, um, to go rake. I'm gonna, I can't wait to go outside and rake. Uh, to do Instacart shopping, that's physically active and my mind's not really wandering during that time. So stay physically active. The next is gonna be to avoid booze, avoid drugs. Only gonna make you feel worse. The next, quit smoking and caffeine. I know a lot of people love caffeine, so did I. And I used to think about on my days off on Sundays, how jittery and how anxious I would be and just a little bit before my break free journey too but I'd just be tweaking and it was the coffee it was the caffeine it was so much of that stuff and smoking yeah you're gonna you think you're gonna feel good oh, give me that sig I need a sig to before I go in and, and do this speech or before I go into work or um, I can't survive just give me this one thing and I'll just relax for a second and it's gonna be maybe a two second endorphin rush but then you're just gonna be in that cycle of slavery and addiction and it's actually going to make you feel worse because it just sets you again on the roller coaster. Healthy food. Um, it might not seem as pleasurable as donuts and milkshakes and cereal and uh, fried foods and fast foods, but healthy food is going to set you straight. Trust me, it will calm you down. And it's easy to give in when we're really hurt and when we're really worrying but that only still perpetuates the problem. We must break free from that cycle. It, it's easy in the quick, instant gratification, but long-term. Good sleep is gonna help you feel less 
anxious, not staying up to all hours of the night. Really put a priority on sleep. And I know sleeping can be hard with anxiety, but maybe if we get ourselves moving throughout the day, need a healthy diet and quit our vices and tell ourselves that this too shall pass. And to the next tip, meditate. We can get ourselves into a relaxed state. Journal, get it out, do a brain dump. Do deep breaths. It can reset your um, your emotional states and mindfulness. Be aware. Be aware of your thoughts. I think it takes mindfulness to remember the, those seven things to tell yourself when you're feeling anxious and then put it into action. There's plenty of different things out there that I've seen. Um, one of the techniques is 333 and that's going to be to notice three objects, to notice three sounds, and to move three body parts. And just off the top of my head, three objects are this coffee cup in my hand, this pen, and my glasses, which I don't always wear because it reflects in the screen. So um, those three objects, three sounds. Car driving by. Be when I put my coffee cup down and a clock ticking in the background and then moving three body parts my mouth my eyelids and fidgeting with my hands a bit and hearing the clock tick reminded me of one last statement that I wanted to make today and that is what we are spending we can be frugal but how are we spending our days how are we spending our time who are we spending our time with that's what we are spending every day and we must we only have a certain amount to spend right and so why not make those days the best day ever spend your days getting you to a position to build your life where you don't need to escape from it. Get yourself into a position where you're spending time doing things that you really want to do and spending time with people who build you up. Spend your time with people who believe in you, with people who love you, with people who better you. I think this community is a great place to start. We're all on different parts of our journeys. Trust me, I've had massive anxiety and I'm pretty proud of how far that I've come. And it's not to say that I, I don't ever get it still. But I'd like to think I have some mindfulness, some awareness, some coping mechanisms, some things to tell myself. And even talking and sharing with you guys is a tremendous help. All these videos, they're for me too. And you know, hopefully one day my kids will watch them too. So God bless. Take care. Enjoy your Wednesday. Let me know how you're doing and break free.